Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. If you would have looked for the forecast for tonight, clear outside says that there are no clouds, that it's perfect. The weather online app, the weather radar says completely cloudy, nothing to see at all. And the third app I looked at said very poor conditions for this night. When I came home from sports and I looked up, it was completely clear. So I guess 1-0 for the clear outside. And for the believers and the rest that it will be clear. The target for tonight, I've chosen it relatively spontaneous. The Seoul Nebula in Cassiopeia, a wonderful gigantic, for my telescope, gigantic uh, hydrogen emission nebula. Again, the red glow, just like the Pac-Man Nebula in the last video. In order not to annoy anyone, anyone with my talking and with noises at night, I've positioned myself in the cellar here today. Not the telescope, of course, but myself here. The telescope is in the backyard, backyard, like last time. Setting up, very smooth. Plate solving, there's a little problem, but it just takes a little bit more time to get that going, but it works. Auto guiding runs perfect. Not even one pixel in accuracy off. And the thing I wanted to talk about today are the correction frames for astrophotography. But I think first, let's look outside. One important thing when it comes to placing your tripod. If you are about to place it on grass or soil or anything while the police is driving by. If the ground is wet or not solid enough, you will need to place the tripod on something solid. So I placed every leg on a brick or stone, whatever you would call it, in order that the legs, which are quite pointy, will not sink in and your polar alignment will definitely suffer if you don't do this. Now to our main target. As you can see, you can't see anything of it. That's the thing of these quiet dark emission nebulae. Let's stretch it and we can see, wow, wow, holy shit. I know this is only a four minute exposure, but this is amazing. Okay, so as I slew to the uh, uh, Sol Nebula with the plate solving, the, this star here was in the middle of the frame. And using the aim option, I clicked on this one, and after the go to, it was completely centered in there. So now I got the the sound nebula perfectly in there. And now the general information: the exposure is 210 seconds, three and a half minutes. I saw 800, of course. No pause because the dithering itself is a pause enough. Count 52. I will do as many as I can until maybe the sun rises again or I'm getting too tired. The quality RAW and JPEG. I always like to have the JPEGs because they can be previewed a lot easier. And of course everything down here, all the same. AVP, 3 seconds and white balance, auto. And now, since we are done here, let's talk about the correction frames because this is a topic I think is very, if not most important, if you want to get a good astro image. For every one of you who know how to shoot flat frames, dark frames, bias frames, and this next thing will not be new stuff, but for everyone out there who doesn't know how to shoot or what even is a flat frame, for example, I think this next part will be very helpful. In the night of imaging, you want to shoot four different types of images to make your final image perfect. The light frames, of course, the images where the data is in, the images I'm taking outside currently. And to make these images better, there are many different errors in the light frame which can be corrected in post-processing if you shoot these correction frames. The first one, I think the least important, I'd say, the bias frame. The bias frame is a dark frame shot at the quickest exposure your camera can take. So a dark frame, you just cover up the telescope or take the camera off and put the cap on so no light is coming in. And in APT, for example, you can just set a bias plane and it will automatically choose the 
faster uh, shutter speed for your camera, in my case 1 through 4000. And I shoot 20 of each correction frame, so 20 bias frames, which can be used in Deep Sky Stacker. And there's not much in these pictures, but they are uh, used to reduce the noise that is created when the sensor is capturing the data on the SD card, I believe. So the camera sensor sends the information very fast to the card and this creates a current which creates heat and noise. Talking about noise, I just heard something out outside. I'll go check. I don't know what that was. So these bias frames, very handy to get rid of some noise, but not a whole lot of noise. So I don't think they are very important, but if you can shoot them, you have to shoot them. And uh, important thing, the ISO has to be at the same ISO as your light frames. So in my case, ISO 800 for the bias frames. Next one, the dark frame. I think most photographers, even non-astrophotographers, know about the dark frame. The dark frame is also with no... Uh, weird noises in the cellar. The dark frame is also no light, just a covered up telescope or the cap on the camera. And they are at the same exposure time as your main light frames. Same ISO and same exposure time and most importantly same temperature as your light frames. So you, better, you best shoot them right after in the end of the night when you're disassembling the telescope for example like I am. And as soon as the light frames are done I put the camera off. I just shoot the flat frames real quick but as soon as that's done I take the camera off, put the cap on and start shooting the dark frames because they are used to reduce the sensor noise which is created when the sensor gets warmed up with lots of exposures. And these dark frames are really very important because the amount of noise in a hot night, 30 degrees Celsius, maybe even 33 degrees sensor, that's an awful lot of noise. So many hot pixels, so many noise, which can be smoothed out by using dark frames. So dark frames, same ISO, same shutter speed as light frames and same temperature, which is sometimes uh, very hard to uh, achieve, but just shoot them after your light frames and you're perfect. The last corrective frame, which I think is maybe in a cold night more important than the dark frame, it's a very important frame, the flat frame. So the flat frame is just the picture of the inside of your telescope if you want. And I think I can show you it tonight how I shoot them, but I will capture it, I can talk to it, so I'm not gonna do it here and you will see what I do in a few hours. So the flat frames, the inside of your telescope and with all the imperfections that your telescope and your camera and your entire optical train has. Every little cone of dust, every vignetting that's happening with your lens and dust on your sensor, imperfections in focus for example they will all be captured within this frame and this frame will be subtracted from your original light frame and your light frame will look awesome. So how are you supposed to take a flat frame? So what I use, if you want to take a flat frame, you have to uh, make a flat field of light. So every part of the camera sensor is supposed to be illuminated evenly. What I do after the light frame is done I slew the telescope in a vertical position. I take a piece of cloth, or in my case, underwear. I put it over the telescope. To keep it tight, I use a rubber band. And then you need a source of light, which is very big and even. Most people buy or build an own flat box, so a box that they can put on the telescope to get an even field of light. I use my tablet. I have a completely white image on the tablet. I just uh, zoom in, make it very bright and put the tablet onto the cloth. And now everything is illuminated evenly. The best setting for your camera in this case, the ISO and the shutter speed are best uh, done automatically by APT. So you best use the flat frames plugin APT and 
of course 20 of those. If you go to auto stretch you will see the vignetting. If you use a clip and filter like, like I do the CLS filter, you can already see the halo of the filter in there. So very important uh, to use to make flat rings. And if you have these three types of images, the bias frame, dark frame, flat frame, and you will import them, of course in RAW, very important, you will import them into DSS, Deep Sky Stacker, and your light frames, and your final image will be awesome. One of the best things of Wi-Fi is that I can sit comfortably in here while the laptop outside still has quite enough Wi-Fi, but not a lot, that I can control it from inside here with TeamViewer. And now I can sit here, catch up on the latest movies or in my case Let's Plays and watch everything and check on the PhD graph and the latest de development in the image, I don't think that I like it. So here we have the tablet with the team viewer on. This is more or less live. And the stars in the bottom edge here, you can't see it in the camera good enough, but all of those here are way too red. I did the meridian flip, I had to refocus, and now most of the stars in the bottom left here are way too red, I don't know why. I hope this won't do anything to the final image. All in all, this night was not very pleasing, very wet, very, very moist outside. You can almost feel the humidity in the air, maybe 80% humidity, the weather station said, so not perfect. But let's see what I can squeeze out of this Soul Nebula. And to every, every each and single one of you out there who's also sitting outside every night that they can. Clear nights, clear skies. May the best photos of today be the worst of your tomorrows. Clear nights. <laughs>